Hey guys, Hilton here with the L Sky Actions. Tonight I'm going to be doing a video tutorial on how to really brighten an image up, give it that pop it needs, and um, really give it that heavenly, um, heavenly vibe. Um, a photographer, um, Katie Gambrell, sent me this image. And when I first saw it, I actually saw this image and I was like, Katie, you gotta send this to me. Um, I love it. I love the composition. Um, I, lo I just love the the mood of this photo. Um, how this bokeh here, uh, you know, or blurred edge draws me to the subject. Um, great composition. Great, great um, subject to photograph. She's beautiful. Love her hair. The way the light just you know shines through the back of her the side of her hair it's just fantastic um so i really appreciate it um katie thank you so much if you're listening out there um she shot this with a canon eos rebel t3 um the exposure was at aperture 5.6 shutter speed 1 200th of a second and the iso was at 160 um this lens that she shot it on was an 18 to 200 millimeter. And the last video tutorial, I talked about shooting on normal program. Again, I'm going to remind you out there, you photographers watching this, Katie, if you're watching this, normal program. I don't know why you guys are shooting a normal program. I mean, um, <laughs> shoot on manual, 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 manual. Um, I cannot you know, say that enough. Manual. Manual exposure. Um, normal program is, um, it really is relying on the camera to do all of your work for you, and it tremendously limits you. Um, fantastic shot, Katie. I love it. Um, but can you imagine what you've done, what you would have done on manual versus normal program? Um, I noticed you shot at 5.6, um, you know, I could tell that it was starting to get a little dim. The lighting's beautiful. It was about to be, what, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes away from sunset. Um, I would have shot it at, I would have dropped that shutter speed down, maybe one one hundredth, shot at, um, you know, three, five, give it a that more, more of that bokeh, even though it's great. Um, and, and maybe bump the ISO down to 100. Um, something around that area. That's what I would have done. But still, the photo is fantastic. Exposure is great. But that normal program, you guys got to shoot manual. Go manual. Don't be afraid. Go out there and just do it. Um, and um, so, so, Katie, if you're listening... Um, just like I told um, another photographer yesterday in a video, gotta shoot manual. Um, you'll never grow as a photographer um, if you're relying on your equipment. And your equipment is dumb. It's dumb. You're the camera operator. You gotta make it happen. And um, and that's what I had to do. I started shooting in program in college, and my professor kept getting on me and kept getting on me and kept getting on me because I was just afraid. I was afraid to to jump out of my comfort zone. And my comfort zone was a shooting program. And once I started shooting in manual, it clicked. It really did. And I was like, wow, this opens up a whole new world to, uh, to experiment in. And, and it really, really has made me the photographer that I've become today. So manual, manual, manual. Okay, back to the image. Um, this is the original. This is what she sent me um, straight out of the camera. And this is what we're going to end up with. It's, it's bright. It makes you feel good. Some may say it's a little too bright. Um, but I like bright. And I like colors. And I like warmth. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So again, here's the before. And here's the after. Bam. Okay. So let's get started. Um, sorry. Okay. All these actions... Are preloaded, and the reason why I did that is because I wanted to cut the video down. Even though I know I'm rambling all the time, I'm rambling. I got to cut it down. So, um, 
I haven't preloaded. I'm just going to show you what I ran. The first action from the essential set, I ran It's Time to Shine. And what I did was I went into this uh, mask. I clicked off the Shine Sharp. Um, before I did that, I clicked on the mask and I brushed away the sharp on this uh, this area right here, this blurred here, here. And then um, I clicked it off and then I went up to this mask and I... Um, brought back some of these detail some of this detail in her hair um, so that's what I did um, and then the next action what I did was I ran um, dodge it and what I did was I dodged her eyes just like that I brought back that uh, you know um, the colors I made it you know brighter um, and, and what I used to do that was if you've seen the videos the previous videos I uh, clicked this black mask, I made sure the foreground was white, and then I used the brush at around 20% opacity, brush opacity, and I just brushed on um, to brighten her, her eyes up. So once I've done that, I'm going to run another action in the um, smoke and effects set. And for you guys who do not know, I'm using our actions from the big bundle set, and this is for CS3 through 5. So breezy day in May. right there okay now once I've run that and that's that um, I drop that down to 45 percent you can go to 100 which is too much I drop that down to 45 and then once I've run that then I'm gonna run another action called control that pop and now what I did was it's a brush um, black mask white foreground and I just brushed it on her face at around 25% brush opacity. Right there. And you can even drop it down a little bit to around 75%. Or you can adjust your brush opacity um, when you brush it on. And if you want to, since it's a black mask, when you're brushing on with white foreground, if you ever want to take it off, you just, you know, switch the foreground to black, brush it on, brush it off with the black foreground, brush it back on with the white foreground. Um, and if you guys, whoever's, if you, you know, the newbies that are watching this right now, if you guys are like, oh, I'm still confused, um, that's fine. We have so many other tutorials um, under this link. I will post more video tutorials that I've done in the past that will explain to you how to use our brushes and the masks and all that good stuff. So... Um, after I've run control that pop, I'm going to run another action called sunny flare. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to provide a flare up in this area to kind of give it more dimension in the back and really bring the subject out. All right. So it's very subtle. Again, I'll take this off. If you're watching in this area right here, it just gives it more of that flare, just very subtle, more of that warmth even to her, her hair right here. Um, and if, as you can see in this mask, this mask before was white. We brushed all this off. So like, um, I'm going to show you real quick. What it looked like before. And all we did was we masked it and brushed it off. Because we just wanted the flare in this corner up here. Yeah. Alright. So um, once we've done that, we're going to run another action, or I ran another action called Soft Brush in the um, Essentials. And... All it did, it's very subtle. It's a it's a brush. So the, the mask was originally um, black, and we just brushed it on in this area to give this more of a soft tone, even though it's really soft, and in this area, and even around the edges of her hair to kind of give it that halo. Um, now, I'm going to show you guys another... Um, the I ran pink and purple shadow. And I've had so many people ask me, how do you use the eyeshadow set? And I'm going to show you how we used a couple 
of the um, the eyeshadow set to really bring out some colors in her in her eyes, um, you know, above her eyes and in, in, in on her lips. Um, here's what it looked like. We just gave it more of a pink, purplish on her eye for her eyeshadow, and then even on her lips, we made it more pink. And to do that, and I'm gonna make another video tutorial on just the eyeshadow set for you guys who want to know how to do it. But inside of this pink and purple shadow set, there are so many different layers to run, and they're all brush layers. So the first one I ran was um, 80s pink. Um, and that just made it more pink on her lips and I just brushed a little bit on her eyes right here up here above her eyes and um, another one that I ran I'm trying to see purple haze which was right here so I'm gonna show you how I did it real quick since I haven't run a tutorial like this before I'm gonna take it off her lips And then I'm going to take off the um, purple haze as well. All right. Now I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to go back like like before I even ran this. And I'm going to run purple haze, so black mask white foreground to brush it on, brush tool. I'm going to drop the, the brush down and I'm going to run it thirty percent brush opacity. Here we go. You see that? It's brushing on that eyeshadow. Beautiful. It's like magic. I can take it off. I hit the eyebrows a tad. I can take it off there. But it's very subtle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 80s pink. And I'm going to brush it on her lips. Just to give it that pink um, that pink tone we're going for to make, make her pop more. 30% again, guys. Got to be subtle. Got to be gradual. Maybe even a little bit here. Just a touch. But I just did this on this image just so you could see what it'll do. And I mean, this is what it looked like before. It's more natural. And then here's after. And I'm digging it. It's different, but I'm digging it. And that's what I did on this image. So. Katie, I hope you're enjoying this right now, these eyeshadows, all of this other stuff. Um, the last action that I ran was an action called Cherry Bomb um, from our color set. And I just wanted to give her skin tone more of a pinkish tone. And that's why I ran it. So I ran that at 30% um, opacity. And I just clicked on the mask. And uh, it was a white mask. And I just brushed it off everywhere else except her face. And I just left the uh, the action layer at 30%. Um, so once we've done that, we're going to flatten this. just want to make sure that I've... Yeah, okay. Because um, we didn't use burn it, so that's why I was saying that. All right. Yep, discard hidden layers, which is the burn it, which we did not use. And I'm going to show you, oh yeah, um, <laughs> the reason why this is taking so long is because this file size is humongous. Katie, you sent me a huge file. How long did it take you to send me this over the email? This thing's like 12,000 um, pixels in width. I mean, <laughs> holy cow zone. Um, 
I love it. I love it. I love it. It gives me more room to work with the pixels. Um, so um, that's great. I had to bump it down to 5,000, but it's, it's, it's bogged up my, my Photoshop quite a bit. But um, that's why it's taking forever. So um, if you guys send me your images, you know, in the future, make sure that they're, you know, at 300 DPI, obviously, so I can work on it. But the pixels are at, you know, below 6,000 width and width, if that makes sense. So, yeah. So once we flattened it, I'm going to duplicate this layer. And I'm going to go in and show you a little trick. See this dark area under her eyes? We're going to get rid of it. I'm going to show you how to do it. And I've showed you guys, if you guys are um, avid viewers of our uh, tutorials, I've showed you in the past. We're just going to sample from here uh, with a sampler tool, and then we're going to go to the brush. Make sure it's at 30% brush opacity, and then we're just going to brush away. It's very subtle. Same thing on this side. Sample it and then brush. And there you have it guys. And here's the before from the uh, dark circles and the after. Big difference. So I hope this helps. Um, huge difference. Katie Thank you so much for sending this. This image is just out of this world fantastic. Love your work. Um, guys, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to post comments under this on our forum because that's where I'm going to be posting it. And uh, you guys have a swell night.